Thank you for taking out of your time to help us out. No problem. It's wonderful to have you. Yes. Yes. 
take your hymnals and turn to number 64. We're going to sing that in a minute. I want to take the time just to say thank you to Mrs. Rhonda Vanderwest at the piano. We borrowed her from Kent City Baptist today. Yes. And our piano players are out of town and she was so willing to come and play. We're so thankful for that. Rhonda, thank you for that. And I even asked her to do a special number. So uh, that's going to happen as well. So let's all stand please and start out our services by singing heartily unto the Lord. Number 64, Jesus is the joy of living. I have found a wondrous Savior, Jesus Christ, the soul's delight. Every blessing of his favor fills my heart with hope. Thank you. 
Thank you for the prospect of eternal life. And uh, Lord, we know it's nearer than when we first believed. And we think about your coming and that it is imminent. And uh, we just pray that we will be looking for it and ready for it. We know there's a reward for those who love your appearing. Bless uh, Brother Fry as he preaches this morning. We thank you for what he shared with us in Sunday school. We just pray that you'll just give us a great day. We're thankful for our visitors from Indiana. Bless them for being here. We just give you the honor and the glory. Thank you for uh, Rhonda stepping in. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, Such a so appreciated. We appreciate her willingness to do that. Bless this service, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You could be seated. It was a joy to meet the Dixon family. You know, I get that right. Good to have you folks with us from Dyer, Indiana. And uh, Grace is Chad's girlfriend. And forgive me for forgetting your two first names. It's just one of those things. Tell me again. Sean and Sarah. Sean and Sarah. Forgive me. And uh, good to have all of you with us today. Amen. Uh, I, I tell you, so much going on. Last week we had over 100 in our morning service yeah. with all that was going on. We couldn't get over. We were so thankful for the number of kids. It doesn't normally happen that way. The, the VBS finale usually has less kids than on a regular VBS night. But we had a lot of those kids come back. That was awesome. I don't know what the draw was. Was it, was it the dinosaurs or what? But that was a great crowd last week. We're thankful. Some of our workers are off. They're gone. Heather's out of town this weekend, Heather and Chad. And my daughter's gone. They're out of town. Some others might be as well. But we're glad you're here. And what a beautiful day, isn't it? I want to just share with you, uh, a lot of work got done. And some of you were so indispensable about that or the work that you did up there at the church house uh, I want to thank you for that we we pretty much got what we could out of the way by um, Tuesday morning they moved the um, dumpster so that they could start showing the house the guy came Wednesday to take pictures if you if you know how to look up these things online you can look at the pictures inside and everything we're thankful Pray that it sells. Keep praying that we have a good, a good price on it and that this building program can get started soon. And I mean soon. I'm praying for that. All right? All right. God bless you. Pastor. All right. This time we're going to have a special by Rhonda. This is by way of introduction. I'll let you know. We know Rhonda pretty well. Um, she and her husband are both involved in Kansas City Schools and capacities over the years. And uh, we appreciate them so much. Their love for the Lord and their family. Their kids were exemplary students in school. Great testimony to the kids. And we, we've always enjoyed the, uh, the fellowshipping with them, the little we have. And we appreciate you so much. But I appreciate you especially coming today in our time of need and filling in. I called her up just because I, I knew she might have a list of people I could call. She says, well, I'm actually free. I could do it. Mm -hmm. Volunteer. Thank you for volunteering. Anyway, I asked her to go ahead and do a special number today as well. <laughs> Uh, take the opportunity to use her. So she's going to present something for the Lord this morning. Go ahead, Rhonda. One of my favorite songs is It Is Well With My Soul. And we live in Michigan where there's just beautiful lakes and rivers all over, right? And um, you've ever just, I just like to sit and watch the water just flowing sometimes. 
I, there's something so soothing about water. And when I think about this song, when peace like a river, when everything else is chaos or up, in upheaval in your life, the peace is not the water, the peace is the Lord that soothes your soul. Um, when sorrows, we've all gone through grief and sorrows, when they're just rolling and waving in, whatever, whatever you're going through, God's taught you to say, hopefully as well with your soul. The second verse says, um, my sin, it gets a little faster because it's more exciting and it says, I'll stand up and you. My sin, oh the bliss, the joy of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Amen. Praise, praise the God. Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. So I always like to, when I'm playing, I'm always singing along in my head and I just challenge you to um, maybe sing the words in your head as you're hearing. And then the best verse is the end one. Um, and Lord, haste the day mm -hmm. when my faith shall be sight. Amen. Um, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. I think about Josh <laughs> playing his trumpet. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. And even so it is well with my soul. So no matter what, whether it's great joy or great sorrow, I hope that you, I hope that we look to the Lord in each of, each of the days that we have. Um, and that we can be at peace in a world where there's not a lot of mm -hmm. peace right now. Yeah. And that we can bring peace that peace to others because I do think when people say there's something different we know that that's the Lord so it is well with my soul 375 if you want to look at the words 375 thank you
seated for this song, that's fine. Let's all sing it together. special this morning. Well, um, just want to mention a few things in your bulletin, and uh, that is that two, three weeks from today, boy, these weeks go by so fast. Three weeks from today, we're having a baptism on September the 10th. Also having one in an evening service on October 1st by a special request. Uh, some family members, uh, of course, that's the Brachamas, little um, um, Breezy wants to be baptized here. She wanted her Uncle Dennis to baptize her, and uh, we're excited about that. There's also, I think, Emma's going to be baptized. On the 10th, I believe we might, we might have two. I know for sure that uh, uh, we're, we're talking to Taylor today, and she's going to be baptized. 
I'm really pushing for Lincoln to get baptized. He's been saved now for about three years, and uh, that's the day after his birthday. But I, I got to talk to his mom and dad. But I've been pushing him to get baptized. Oh, there might be others. If you need to be baptized, uh, we would love to see that happen. Amen? Uh, let me just say a little bit about what's happening tonight. Now, Pastor Mark filled me in about your son, Seth. So he, he might be playing might, tonight. Might be tonight. We're not sure. You're not sure on that. He, I, I don't know if he has, you know, 18 year olds. I don't know if he has plans. <laughs> <laughs> but he, you know, he's just in, in talking about him, I heard some wonderful things about Seth. So if I, I'm looking forward to meeting him, and, and uh, so if, hopefully that'll happen. If not, you know, it's, it's not Lord's will. But uh, I was thinking about these young people, and uh, Chad, when does school start for you? A week from this coming, all right? And so uh, we're praying for you as you go back, and nice meeting Grace today. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, Esther flies out to West Coast with her mom, and uh, we were uh, was kind of teasing her. She said she's going to be crying all the way back home, and I know that's going to be hard, but uh, it'll be a blessing as well. We're going to be praying for you, and uh, I know I've shared many times some of my struggles as uh, with homesickness. But you know what? You have a sister out there, so that's not fair. You got somebody on for your first year. Uh, I didn't have anybody. In, in, uh, had the Lord, of course. But, you know, from back home. But it's nice that Sarah's nearby. But we're praying for you, Esther, as you go out to college. And we're going to miss you. So we're, we're excited for your first year out at West Coast. Isn't that great? Uh, so keep these young people a long time ago, and I'm not, this is not bragging, because this wasn't my idea. Somebody else came up with this idea. They said, Pastor, why don't we support young people that go away to Christian college? And you know what? We've been doing that for I don't know how long. Um, it's gone up, what is it now, $80 a month that we give to young people that go to Christian colleges. Um, my son Isaac went through seminary down at Bob Jones. You were... Even though he had gone away, got married, moved away, you were gracious to support him for that four, four years. Uh, others, Pastor Mark, your kids that have been through college, I just want to say uh, a wonderful thank you to you for doing that Amen. for young people going away to college. I really appreciate your generosity. It is just as much a commitment as it is for, to our missionaries. And I hope that will be a blessing to you as well as it is, I know, to the others. All right? Um, I think the rest of the announcements are, are pretty self-explanatory, except for one that I read this morning. I didn't forget you, don't. Amanda Sizemore, their granddaughter, is having a baby, and if you knew her, please come to her baby shower. That is this coming Saturday, Wednesday, um, August 26th. Is that the right date? Day's the 20th, yes. 188 Alma in Sparta from 2 to 4 p.m. So um, her daughter Renee is putting that on along with Joan. And I pray that that will be well attended and will be a blessing to Amanda. Is this her first child? Yes. Oh, praise God. Amen. Men, if you come, we'll take uh, our offering this morning. So we praise God for these. I, there's kind of a baby boom going on, isn't there? You know, when you, you think about it, we just, uh, we saw um, Miriam that you're, where did Miriam go? She working back? She's in nursing. She's in nursing. Miriam's um, granddaughter had her baby not too long ago. We put expectant mothers that we hear about on our um, prayer list so we kind of know and, and pray for them. So that's wonderful. Father, thank you for the joy of serving you. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that uh, we, we just kind of step back sometimes. We look back in our lives. Just like we heard Brother Doug talking about today. In that verse that says, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and he delighteth in his way. We just look back and we just thank you for delighting in the way of Camp Lake Baptist Church. It's your ministry, it's your church. Lord, we're excited about what you're going to do. Lord, um, we pray that we can get going on this building soon. We pray for the, build, the house to sell and that we would get a good price out of it, Lord. And we just thank you for what you're going to do. You are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Thank you for that. Please bless each giver and bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For the offertory, I'm going to play Come Thou Foul, which is page three, if you want to follow. There's, again, some wonderful uh, lyrics. Come thou foul, come
want to mention one announcement for the teens because it is this Saturday. Uh, you might notice an upcoming event. It says, Calling All Teens, Coming Soon, Bible and Biscuits. We're starting our teen Bible study on Saturday morning. So um, I want parents to hear this so they know it's, it's happening. Uh, coming Starting this Saturday, um, I'm calling it Bible and Biscuits, a little teenage Bible study. It's kind of like a discipleship Bible time. For any teens that want to come, just be at McDonald's in Sparta uh, by 930, all right? And uh, that's going to, going to be a weekly event. So you'll see that in the bulletin every week on the Saturday events. But that's coming this Saturday. All right. Take your hymnals. You can turn to 332. It's a chorus we're going to sing after our greeting. But first, let's stand and greet one another this morning and make everyone feel welcome here at Camp Lake Baptist. Good to see you this morning, Brad. How are you? Yeah, I'm going to have a Joy, real joy, wonderful joy. 
things that are in the bulletin. There is a sign-up sheet back there for you ladies that might be going to uh, Camp Kobiak for the ladies' retreat. I should have mentioned that. Um, also, uh, our planning meeting is September the 22nd. And the planning meeting is for all officers and their spouses, so uh, let me just encourage you about that. That'll be here at the church. And so that's uh, Friday night, September 22nd at, um, well, what time does it say? 6 p.m. All right, didn't have that memorized. Um, you, you might notice in the bulletin on September 3rd is uh, Madel Dela Cruz, a young man 
uh, from the Philippines. He's going to be presenting his work in our church that Sunday morning. I'm going to be gone. Mary and I will be at Isaac's church. And um, we wanted to be there. It's momentous to us. It, he, he said, Dad, I'm not really having anything special. Well, it's special to us because uh, Pastor Snyder is actually retiring this coming Saturday. They're having a retirement open house for Pastor Snyder. And Isaac takes over as the senior pastor on the 3rd of September. So you just be praying for him and Misty, uh, the, all the challenges uh, of a young pastor and a pastorate. And uh, their church is doing well and uh, praying that it will continue to do so. So I'll be gone for that. Uh, and I'll explain some of the other reasons we'll be gone in the future. We're getting a chance to go see our new grandson in Florida, um, and that's Daniel. Um, we've been able to see him Facebook, FaceTiming, but we're going to go see him in October. We'll be gone on the 22nd, so I'll say more about some of these dates where I'll be gone. But anyway, I just want to say this before Brother Doug comes. and A flashback occurred to me. I remember, I remember when I met you. Uh, it was at uh, Cal Casca there at uh, Calvary Baptist. Dr. Mark Graham had been my pastor at Maranatha, and he went up there, took that church. And he was doing, uh, it was about counseling. Do you remember the counseling uh, seminar that he put on? And that's where I met you. I remember the date, too, approximately. It was in 1995, that winter, because I remember going up there. And so it was not long after that that we invited you to come and we took you on for support. And uh, one of the things I appreciate about these folks is um, that you don't have to worry about what they're doing on the mission field. You don't have to wonder. You know what they're doing? They're planting churches. I don't know how many you have planted. You can tell us that. But I, I was impressed with that over the years. Every time you come back and report uh, we planted so many churches here, and we planted so. And, and I'm always pleased to hear that you're turning these churches over to the nationals and moving on. And, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So I'm thankful for uh, these many years that we've been able to be a, a team with you both. And we're thankful for that. Come and share what God's laid on your heart. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. And what a blessing it's already been to be here this morning. Beautiful music. Thank you so much. Uh, it was very, very, very good. It kind of reminds me of our first church plant in Portugal back in the early 80s. We, uh, we were teamed up with uh, uh, a couple who were about as talented as musically as, as we are, <laughs> and, uh, which isn't much. And so uh, we didn't have uh, uh, music. But uh, our colleague, Debbie, she said, well, I'll try to do something. And so what she did, we had those little uh, um, battery-operated keyboards. And she couldn't read the music, but she put uh, numbers on the keys and corresponded to the notes. So instead of playing uh, an A and a C and an F, she played one, three, five, two. And, and, and then this, this keyboard had a chord thing, so you could just play it. You just push your finger on one thing and it played the chord, and she would go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, let's start over again. <laughs> and, and to go through a through a song, it normally took about ten minutes because we'd have to go back and repeat. But uh, God was good to us, and I I can tell you from experience, it wasn't the music that planted that church. Uh, we were very musically challenged for many years. And now we're in a new church plant, and uh, uh, one of the brothers that uh, um, is the most musical plays guitar, uh, kind of. And <laughs> sometimes he's playing something, sometimes we're singing something else. But again, I, we'll trust God. It's, it's God's work, as I said, and it does, does, it's not up to us, it's not up to our talents or abilities. And we know God will bring along people mm -hmm. that will fill in those gaps for us. Uh, as we go forward. Uh, again, I, I, I do remember that very clearly. Uh, Pastor Mark Graham, what a dear yeah. friend he was uh, yes. of our ministry as well. And I also remember a story about uh, someone from, I don't know if they're from the church or a friend in jail in Kalkaska County that I met, so I won't go into that. But uh, yeah, I, I used to go with our pastor to do jail ministry <laughs> and, um, and a person that was connected somehow. I don't think he was a deacon, but I think, <laughs> I think he was connected somehow and in the Cal Calcasca County Jail. 
But anyway, uh, we do have a long history, and we're so thankful. Thank you so much for your uh, support of our ministry, your prayers for our ministry, and what God is doing there. I said our ministry. It's not our ministry. It's God's ministry. That's right. And uh, what he's doing there is because God's good. It's just because God's good. And that's what I'd like to talk about a little bit in Ephesians. Uh, this morning, Ephesians chapter 3. People ask us all the time. Oh, and by the way, uh, Pastor Tyson, you should have told the kids that there would be another dinosaur here this Sunday. <laughs> and maybe more kids would have come. <clears throat> but, but people ask us all the time, well, you know, what's kept you in Portugal all these 40 years? Uh, you know, in 40 years, it uh, seems like a long time to some people, the other people not such a long time. The, in Portuguese years, it's not much. Portugal has been a country since 1148. Wow. So 40 years is nothing <laughs> uh, by Portuguese years. But I guess by missionary years, it's, it's quite a few. We've uh, seen a lot of missionaries come and go over those years. So what is it that's kept the prize in Portugal? Good question, and I don't have the answer. Now, you might think, well, Portugal's a beautiful country. Uh, and who wouldn't want to live in Portugal for 40 years? Well, it is. It's a fantastic country. It's beautiful. Uh, we have everything for such a small country. We have uh, lots of ocean coastline, beautiful beaches, mountains in the interior, rivers, uh, plains, everything you can imagine, all within a short driving distance. Even snow. Now, we live as far away from that as we possibly can, but it's interesting, again, how God does things. This new church plant that we're involved in, we can see the highest peaks on the continent right from where we're planting the church in the city, and there's snow up there. So in 30 minutes, if I wanted to, I would go there. So we're thinking about shipping back a snowblower just to see what it's like to use one in Portugal. Never done that before. And I don't think they've ever seen one there. Um, but that could be part of the people. The people of Portugal. Love the people. Now, are any of you here of uh, Spanish descendancy? Okay. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to speak badly about Spaniards anyway. Here, here's, here's what makes Portuguese people so great. They are so accommodating. Now, if you go to Spain and you're lost and you ask directions, now that doesn't happen nowadays. I think GPS would, in Spanish would even tell you just keep going in front. They just say, just keep going. You'll get there. <laughs> you know what they'll do in Portugal? They'll say, oh, get in your car and follow me. And they'll take you there. I had an experience one time where I went to a funeral uh, at this, uh, I had to go to the cemetery, um, and I went to the wrong cemetery. But I didn't know there were two cemeteries not far from each other. Went the wrong side, and I was looking. I was looking in the chapel area. I didn't see anyone I recognized, and so I, I just kind of quietly walked back out. Well, a man came out and followed me. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. I went the wrong funeral. And I, I said, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to disturb. No, no, no. I said, what are you looking for? I said, oh, I'm looking for the cemetery. Uh, uh, this this man is, is is going to be buried here. He said, oh, that's not here. It's it's. He said, you know the area? I said, not very well. He said, well, you go here, you go here, you go here. He said, no, forget it. He said, get in your car, follow me. About 20 minutes later, we get to the cemetery that I was supposed to be at. And he said, this is it, bye, have a good day. That's the way they are. Yeah. You gotta love Portuguese people. The food, well, it's fantastic. Best in Europe, best in Europe by far. And we've traveled throughout Europe. Wow. So all of these things that are so wonderful about the country, but why is it that we're still there? It doesn't have anything to do with the food or the people or any of that. But it does have to do with something we're going to read about in Ephesians chapter 3. So let's look at that real quickly. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3. Paul begins this, how? For this cause. And that's a phrase you'll find several times in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. What cause? Well, it's what he had to talk about before. And you know, if you look, go back to chapter 2, what does he talk about? He talks about how the Spirit has given life and how this barrier between the Jews and the Gentiles was broken down by the gospel, yeah. right? By Jesus Christ. There was a barrier between these two peoples. Jews had nothing to do with the Gentiles. And because of that, there was always this barrier. And to become, to become a believer... According to them, what did you have to do? You had to become a Jew first. Mm -hmm. And that was all the whole issue that we have in, in, in Galatians where Paul had to write to them, no, that's not the way it works. 
And if you remember right, if you remember right, in Acts chapter 15, there was a church council held. All the leaders of the church got together to decide this issue. Is this what has to happen? You have to become a Jew first to become a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ? That's the issue. Paul says that because of that, because of all this, because you have been reconciled to Christ uh, or up to God by Christ. Because of that, I'm writing you, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Now, while we're going through this, I want you to focus on the word, not on me, on the word. And I want you, there's a very important word here, and I don't want you to miss it, okay? One word. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace yep. of God, which is given to me, to you were, and how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote for in few words. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Paul starts out talking about a mystery. Now, we when we think of a mystery, maybe we think of our favorite mystery writers, something that, that you try to figure out and, and you really can't understand it until the very end. Well, there's a mystery going on in our house right now. We know that we have a box of prayer cards somewhere on our property. <laughs> now, we did a thorough cleaning. My mother passed away many years ago. We just kind of left the attic as it was. We did a thorough cleaning of the attic this spring. It was, one of the, it was back in April, it was snowing. They said, we're going to go up there and get some work done. We've been wanting to do this. Started cleaning things out, throwing things away, uh, uh, giving things away, trying to figure out what to do with things. But there was a box of prayer cards still there. You know when you order prayer cards, you have to order 10,000 of them, and you give away maybe 500. Uh, so we knew we had these things. Well, we started running low. I took some down. We started running low. Let's go find some. Go get some more prayer cards here. And sends me up to the attic. Get some more prayer cards. Can't find them. Can't find them. Went through every box. And she says, well, I know how you look for things. <laughs> Apparently, some of you wives have experience with your husband on that. You know, The keys are sitting right on the table. Can't find the keys. You know where I put the keys? They're on the table. I can't find them. Right? I went. I looked. So she had to go up and look because I didn't know what I was looking for. She came down and said, I can't find those prayer cards. Did you look at everything? She looked through everything. Something amiss here. We don't throw prayer cards away. I'm quite frugal. And we don't throw things away that might have some value later on. So, we don't know where they're at. It's a mystery. But that's not the mystery Paul's talking about here at all. What's the mystery? Well, a mystery in the Bible is something that was not known previously in the Old Testament. Wasn't understood, but now has been revealed. And so Paul is talking about something that now is revealed. And what is that mystery? Verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now that might not seem like a big thing to us, but it certainly was to the Jews. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to become a Jew. We're all equal. We're all in this together. We're all the same. Anyone can be a part of God's family. Yes, Isn't that an amazing thought? Amen. Isn't that amazing when you think about God can save anyone. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter where you came from. God can save anyone. And that's the mystery. And who is that revealed to? Paul says that mystery was revealed unto God's holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And it was revealed unto Paul. Now we know it was revealed to Peter also, right? Remember Peter's vision when he visited Cornelius? Mm -hmm. Peter had a vision that was repulsive to him. Unclean things, ooh, coming down and you eat those things. Uh, how can that be? No, I would never do that. That's against my religion. Now, a lot of people eating green beans is against their religion. <laughs> but all of this stuff, it's, no, I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. 
And he went to Cornelius. And Cornelius also had a vision. And he came to Christ. He became a follower of Jesus. So Peter had this. It was revealed to Paul. But why was it revealed to Paul? Why was it revealed to Paul? And that's the key word. Grace. The grace of God. Amen. How that by the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you, uh, to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words. Why was Paul the recipient of this mystery? Only by God's grace. And that's all. It's not because Paul was anything special. It's not because Paul was more in tune with God than others. No. It was simply by God's grace that he was allowed to reveal this mystery. The mystery that we are all one in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. No more barriers. You know, there is, the barriers still exist, don't they? Mm -hmm. There are certain places that some of us can't go, we can't be a part of. Uh, that's, that's the way it is in life, right? There are barriers, but not when it comes to God's family. Mm -hmm. The walls have come down. That mystery. And when did that mystery begin? Or why? Uh, how did that all begin? Is it because one day God looked down and said, you know, this first plan I had isn't working out real well. He looked down at his chosen people. They had turned their backs. They had left the God that had chosen them. And he says, well, maybe I'm going to have to do something different. Oh, I've got an idea. I'm going to send my son from heaven, and he's going to die for the sins of the world, and that will change the whole thing. Is that how that happened? Nothing, nothing ever happens in God's plan by chance, no. or as a reaction. We are very reactionary, aren't we, as people? God's not, because it says that this mystery in verse uh, 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 three, how that by revelation he made unto me the mystery, as I wrote in a few words, whereby four, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it was revealed uh, to the holy apostles by the prophets, that the Gentiles should be for heirs uh, uh, of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. But that began way back, one way back, in eternity. This was always part of God's plan. Again, it wasn't a reaction to what was happening. It was always part of God's plan. And so it couldn't have been understood by the prophets of the Old Testament. The prophets of the Old Testament proclaimed what God was telling them. And by faith, they trusted him. By faith, they believed that God was going to do something special. And that's what it was. So this mystery was revealed to Paul by grace. But verse 7 and this is where it hits home to us. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace. the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. How did Paul become a preacher of this mystery? How did Paul become the one who would take the gospel to the Gentiles? Because of his qualifications? Because of his personality, because of, of his importance. You know how that is sometimes. Oh, if, if this person would only get saved, what an impact they would have for the gospel on people. You know what? God just wants simple people who will preach the gospel faithfully. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the impact of the person, it's the impact of the spirit that makes a difference. Right? right. And God uses anyone. And God will use anyone. So it wasn't that. It was only by God's grace that Paul was called there. And you think about Paul. A man who he says, when he raised the, the Philippians, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrew, the Pharisee of the Pharisee. He could trace his lineage back to the tribe of Benjamin. He had all of this pedigree. He was a rising star in the Jewish community as he persecuted the church. But this man was chosen by God by God's grace, not based on anything he had done, to be the one to proclaim this mystery. 
This Paul, who says in verse 8, and unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The least, less than the least. What Now, how, what is that? What degree is that? You know, we have, uh, we have comparative, superlative. What's less than the least? Isn't least the, the lowest you can get? Yeah. Well, apparently there's something under the least. Because that's what Paul says. Paul had humbled himself understanding that it was God's grace and God's grace alone that called him to this ministry to say that I am the least deserving of the least. And many times in ministry we feel that way. I, I can never, never understand why God would choose us to do his work. I could have found a lot of people a lot more talented than us, a lot more intelligent than us, a lot better looking than me to do his work. And sometimes I look at people and I'm a little bit envious of their abilities, their talents, their, their, their uh, uh, possibilities, but I know that God chose us. And again, the only reason he did was by his grace. Amen. And every day I thank God for his grace. Not in just saving me, but in calling me to his ministry. Amen. And I can't explain that calling. People try to ask all the time, well, how did God call you? I said, I really don't know. I don't know. I said, one day we prayed, we decided to go to Portugal, and we went. And I'm not sure that God's called us yet. That's been 40 years ago, but I <laughs> kind of think maybe he did. I don't know. But he might move us somewhere else. We don't know that either. But it's only by God's grace, mm -hmm. okay? Only by God's grace that he has given us this opportunity. And we enter into God's presence with this kind of humility, always thanking him That's good. for his grace. And by this, we preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make, verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now let's go on to verse 14. So what's Paul's response? What's Paul's response to God's grace in his life? Uh, the uh, the uh, um, Come Thou Fount, the third verse of that talks about God's grace. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor I'm constrained to be. I'm a debtor to God's grace. That's good. And it's only by God's grace. And so what's Paul's response? Verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So what's his response? What's, what's, what, 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 what it symbolizes a bowing of the knee before someone? Obviously, it symbolizes humility and reverence. Now, where we live in, in Mafra, Portugal, it's a city that has a palace, royal palace, built by King John V. And I won't get started on this because I took a course in the history and the workings of the palace, a year and a half course. And one day I came home all excited. It was two hours, of course. Came home all excited. I wanted to share with Sharon what I had learned in this course. And I started out talking about the sewer system of the palace. And I could go on and she, wait a minute, you think I'm interested in the sewer system of the palace? I said, but it was amazing. It was incredible. I, I love this place. And I do guided tours through it. I have visited hundreds of times. I never get enough of it. I love to look at it. Because it's enormous. It's a quarter mile long by a quarter mile deep. Wow. And it has uh, 4,400 windows and doors, 1,400 rooms, 13 kitchens, and an incredible sewer system. <laughs> <laughs> I go on and on about this place. But when King John V built this, he put a tower <laughs> on the south side and a tower on the north side. The tower on the south side was for the queen. That was her quarters, the 
tower on the north side was for the king. Now, this palace also was not a yearly palace. This was his summer vacation home. He built his little cabin up there because in August it gets very hot in Lisbon. And so he would come out toward the ocean where we live and spend a month in the summer. So it was only a summer palace. Oh, wow. But he was nice enough to give his queen the south side, which got a little more sun than the north side. But for the queen to go that quarter mile from her quarters to his quarters, she had to be summoned. She just couldn't march down the hall and go, hey, King John, I'm here. What are you gonna do today? No, he had to be called. And when she was called, she had to come in, bowing before him, recognizing that he was sovereign, appointed by God to be king of Portugal. When we enter into God's presence, we better bow the knee before him, recognize who he is, mm -hmm what he has done for us in reverence, recognizing that he is God. But also, Paul talks about this in the sense of prayer. Because why did he bow the knee before God in reverence and honor? Praying that these Ephesians would understand this idea of grace that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length, depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge they might be filled with all the fullness of God. That they too would understand God's grace as he did and recognize God's grace. It was only by God's grace that the Gentiles were allowed to come into his presence as his chosen people as well. So Paul, after this response, after this recognition of who God is and what he has done, he ends with this beautiful doxology. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. What is God able to do because of his grace? I love these two words together. Exceedingly abundantly. Mm -hmm. I like abundance. Exceeding abundance is even better. Mm -hmm. Now if our tomatoes ripen, we're going to have exceeding abundance of tomatoes. I, I get a little carried away with the garden sometimes. I planted 30 tomato plants this year for two people. I hope that's going to be enough. But that's the idea. God does more than we can ever imagine or think. And I'm going to end with this. If you are serving God, if you are cognizant of his grace in your life, and it's only by his grace that you are who you are, you are where you are, God will do more than you can even imagine. And don't get me started on that. Because God has done that in Portugal. Would I like to see more? Yes. But God has done some things that we never could have imagined. We never could have thought possible. God is that way. And he allows us to be a part of it, as I talked about this morning. It's only, it's only by God's grace. And it's not based on anything we do. It's not based on anything that we know. It's only by God's grace. Mm -hmm. And what a privilege it is to go along with him Amen. and to be a part of that. So may I encourage you this morning, first of all, recognize God's grace in every aspect of your life. Grace permeates everything about the Christian life. Not just being saved by grace. No. Grace has to permeate every area of our life. And let us be those who show and extend grace to others. Because if it were not for the grace of God, we would not be who we are and where we are. Let's learn to extend that to others. There are people out there. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe they're a nasty neighbor. Maybe they're people you don't agree with politically. But you know what? They need God's grace too. Amen. They're just like these Gentiles in the eyes of the Jews. People need God's grace. And let us bow the knee before God and praise him and thank him for his grace in our lives and for the ministry that he has allowed us to have. And let me say this in closing. I already said that, didn't I? 
Every one of you has a ministry. Yes. I don't care what it is. Every one of you has a ministry. And everyone's ministry is important and necessary. Francis Schaeffer wrote a book many years ago called No Little People, No Little Places. Mm -hmm. And in God's kingdom, there's no such thing as little or insignificant or unimportant. If you're serving God where he's put you, that's what God wants you to do. And you are important to God's kingdom. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace in our lives. We thank you that you loved us and you love us so much that you saved us and that you keep us saved. Say, uh, saved. Thank you, Father, for your grace in allowing us the privilege of serving you. And may we never forget that only by your grace we are who we are and we are where we are. Amen. So, Father, may we bow the knee before you this morning as a church, recognizing what you have done for us. Father, please bless these dear people. Bless this church. And I pray for one maybe who has never experienced your grace, that your spirit might speak to that heart this morning, that that person might understand maybe for the first time how much you love them. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand.